Now, as somebody who's an HK purist, yes, who I, I don't mind paying, you know, shelling out for the 93 mags yes. and dealing with all of the, uh, mm -hmm. the niceties of owning an actual HK, this, of course, makes me want to throw up. Hey everyone, James Reeves, TFB TV SHOT Show 2023 with my good buddy, Billy. I'm warning you, this guy, he's a live one. He's a live one, Bill. I always love talking to Billy over here at the PTR booth. We've got the PTR 63, the sexual tension between Billy and I, very high. This gun, hot. What do we got, Billy? Uh, we'll beat a bucket of water to cool it down, but the 63 <laughs> is something that uh, PTR has been working on, honestly, behind the scenes for a few years. Uh, it kind of bothered me, honestly, because I always wanted to talk about it, and I'll be in work, and I'll see, you know, a few prototype ones that we're testing and shooting, but um, we took, basically, everybody would always ask PTR for a 33 or a 93, which makes sense, buy everything that we make, but the 63, I think, first of all, takes that standard AR mag, so that's going to save people a lot of money. Most of the 93, 33 stuff I see out there for magazines are quite costly, oh, yeah. and they're mostly pretty used, highly used, so... That makes a big difference. Uh, secondly, one of the awesome features, because when the 41 was coming around, it was actually going to compete with the M16. And so to do that, it needed certain features. One of the ones for a roller lock that never existed was you still get your HK slap on, but see how it just died there? You're actually going to have the bolt hold open and be able to forward. Uh, it's not the it. forward assist, but the bolt hold open. So that safety feature for me, it's just something I'm used to on all my guns, even though I'm going to check the chamber. Bigger deal. For our left handed guys, we. We finally got the shell deflector in there. I know it's not ergonomically left-handed, but at the end of the day, I feel for you. My friends, a lot of my friends are left-handed. I know what they deal with. The casings like to fly off these. It's pretty awesome. I don't befriend lefties. Continue. <laughs> uh, our M-lock hand guard that we make in-house, but we also made sure to stay in that length. So if you wanted to go back to the wide hand guard or the thin hand guard, all you'd have to do is purchase that in the pin. You don't have to alter or do anything. I always find that to be important because everybody likes to have their own, you know, I would say uh, German HK style to the guns. Um, the welded rail, um, we got the uh, AR commercial style tube. We'll probably feature ours with the Hogue and possibly the M16 style one. We haven't quite got to how we want to land the SKUs. It might just be a stock extra, uh, but at the end of the day, I know for a fact this is gonna be a gun that's gonna carry PTR really far. It's a fun shooter. Um, very accurate. The other thing that I left out, which is kind of dorky, but I enjoy this, uh, you're in line with the barrel now. Most of the time on these style, you slip down. I almost make my own style of like cheek pad just to get lined up. So with that being set there, honestly, it was a, a lot easier to be way more accurate with uh, generic ammunition. Talk to me about the threading. What do we have in the muzzle device? Um, I want to say that they went with... On this one, it's five, I want to say maybe five eighths by 24. We might have stayed that way just so we can continue on. But I want to say that they didn't lock that in place because we were working on some other stuff that we didn't launch yet. TBD. Yes. TBD is basically what we're saying. Now, the you, gun itself I wanted to show, but there is some other stuff going on here. I see what you're doing. You're making it accessible. You're making it compatible with accessories that are inexpensive and available to the average shooter. If I wanted to, say, revert the stock to something more traditional, uh, uh, can I do that, A, and B, are there any plans to maybe integrate that if the answer is no? Or maybe to use a, even a Picatinny mount in the back? Um, I discussed the Picatinny route. That, that's easy to do, so we, that's definitely an option. Uh, this pin setup and distance is very similar to some other models out there, so we can do a stock, a standard one. Um, and we were also talking about a collapsible stock. So there's like three or four ideas that we have going on that are in the works. I just don't, like I said, I don't know if it's going to... Idea for me would be to land this with the standard stock and have the two other options as an add-on. And uh, most of our distributor partners and dealers would love to carry all of them because, like you, I like mine traditional, but a lot of the feedback we were getting is I like to keep my HKs in the safe. I love to shoot my PTRs, and that's what we aimed around. You know what I mean? Right, sure. Uh, excellent pun, first of all, Billy. No, second, I, I totally get that. And like I said, you know, I'm joking. I'm not no, ragging, no. ragging too hard on you guys no. uh, for – for, making this a little bit more you know non-traditional accessible you've got ar-15 compatibility with the grip with the stock maybe maybe the possibility i could do something a little bit more traditional yep. on here we'll have the traditional uh lower available 
uh, either through our dealers, distributors, or some of our parts partners. Uh, because again, I'm like you, and I like mine to look as close as something that was original. But I noticed the shooters, and uh, even Timony's been working with us for triggers, all this stuff. So it's getting more modularity. It's getting a lot like. <sighs> It's going away from what I thought it would stay to. So there is some people that really want to make this a more modernized platform. So I think it meets in the middle. Humor me. Yes. If I wanted to get as close as possible to a 93, what am I going to be able to, to change out and possibly swap to something a little bit closer to the original design? You'd be able to add the, the traditional stock. You'd be able to add the traditional handguard. It would come down to you wouldn't be able to convert the magazine. Which is fine, I think, for a lot of people. And uh, I believe it didn't have the shell deflector, but a lot of people added that on. You'd be really close. And, and in, we don't have this set in stone yet, but in normal PTR fashion, we usually start with the rifle. We typically end up going to a pistol, and then we end up bringing like a classic model with no rail and all that. So I would assume since we've done that with almost every other model, we will we'll probably do that again. So I think you'll be able to get pretty darn close. Parts compatibility in the upper bolt carrier group, so on and so forth with the 93, what are we talking? Um, very close. I think the, the carrier is ever so slightly different because of the bolt hold open. Mm -hmm. So that's the only place, but I believe uh, you might, uh, the bolt head, some of the extractor parts, there's a lot of interchangeability, but with the bolt hold open and the AR, the mag catch release and that carrier are gonna be different because it's a different design on the, on the uh, receiver. Two most important questions of SHOT Show. Yes. Price, availability. Uh, I want to say availability be uh, no later than Q3, beginning of Q3. We want to mass produce them before we roll anything out. Uh, we have made a bunch, but we've made them individually. You know what I mean? Um, the, um, we're stamping the receivers in-house already, doing all that. And I want to see the MSRP would be no higher than 1900 And in mass production, we're looking to lower that so we can sell as many rifles as possible. Billy, it's always a treat to have you on TFB TV. Thank you, and guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned. We're bringing you more from SHOT Show 2023.